For me, Victoria's Secret is always like a little tricky. Josephine, Jasmine, thanks for coming on Real Pod. I'm so excited to have you. And major news, pregnant, just announced <laughs> yeah. it to the world. You're getting probably an influx of messages. I mean, what made you guys wait to six months? What's it been like now that everyone's in on the secret? I think you just, first of all, you like to just keep it for you for a while. And then, yeah, I don't know. I just, I didn't want to seem pregnant for too long. <laughs> and I didn't feel pregnant for so long. Like, it took a while for it to pop. But then once it pops, it's now it's here. Mm -hmm. It's I don't know. I, I would have felt weird posting just a picture of a flat stomach. Yeah. And Jasmine, you've been through this. So it's you can kind of help and be there for the calls. Have you guys been leaning on each other? Yeah, we definitely have like a six month gap, right? No, it's between perfect. the two. So it's been really nice to give her tips. And I think for her to see like all the things that I've been going through over the last few months and asking questions. That's nice. I'm the little uh, test guinea pig. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> Everything. She's like, don't do this. Use this product. I'm like, yeah. this is perfect. I don't it's, even have to research. People tell you like so many things to use and so many things to buy. And I've just been sort of going through them all. I'm like, okay, Joe, probably don't need this. Like I really use this, didn't use this. So it's, I think it's good. Yeah. Perfect. And it's great because you're no, in business together. You have similar lives. Like you guys got married, which I was telling Joe, before you got in, but your weddings were insane. I think Thanks. my mom actually has an obsession with you and your dress and everything. I mean, she was just because you got married like sooner to when I got married. And so my mom was sending Aww. everything. Absolutely slayed it. I mean, in wedding Thank world, you. both your of you. Is so stunning. To you. I felt like I was at a royal wedding. I loved it. I was like, this is so cool. I wanted it to feel like a real princess wedding. That was yeah. cool. nailed it. Yeah. Both <laughs> of you had such gorgeous photos. I mean, everything was amazing. So you're both models. How did you meet exactly? Was it on set? Was it in the industry? Was it at BS? We have been modeling for like 12 years now, 12, 13 years. And then we would do fashion shows all around the world, like New York, London, Milan, and Paris. And we, we would see each other. started at the same time. Right? Yeah, we started the same season. So we would see each other backstage all the time, but we would never say hi to each other. We were both kind of shy. Yeah, we had we both had our moms there with us everywhere we went. And which that. was unique because that was, yeah. you, you stood out. Like, or you notice the other girls with moms. That's a big reason why I think I also noticed Jasmine. Is, and she's also just stunning. <laughs> Thank you. You too. I told <laughs> my mom, that girl is so pretty. She's at every show. And she's like, you should go say hi to her. I'm like, no way. Like, that's weird. Why would I go up to a random girl? I think it actually took a few seasons for us to just stare at each other. Yeah. I think honestly, it really took Victoria's Secret to bring us together. We started working with them. And then we signed, when they signed their big group of angels, we were the two girls that really loved working out. And like lifting weights. And we sort of developed a relationship in the gym. Love that. And yeah. so having your moms there, was that both your moms being like, we're going to be by your side because we don't know these people. We want to just protect you. Or were you feeling like, I don't have a buddy? Like who initiated that with oh, each of you and your for moms? For me, it was my mom. She was just like, I'm totally supportive of this. Let's try it out. But I also, I think everybody has like an idea of what the fashion industry is, especially before social media we didn't know as it's not as transparent as it is now. So my mom was just like, I'm not going to send you overseas and not understand. And I was super lucky that she was capable of using her vacation weeks on me. And she would follow me along like fashion weeks, which is not a week, a full month and a half of just going through all the cities. So super grateful for that. Yeah, my mom too. I think it was her decision more so because she has been in the fashion world for so long and she saw all the things that go on and you know you have to have a really strong backbone in this industry so I think her being there as a support system was always really really important for her to have for me and for the listener her mom is a stylist and has been in the industry for how long since I was a baby <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh that's got to help because yeah, yeah then it's not totally uncharted territory whereas for you and your mom exactly. it might have felt that way I kind of relate to what you're saying about sussing each other out at the events, like who are you going to talk to? I have to imagine it's similar to when I am at an influencer event or go on a brand trip and you're like, okay, you're just reading people like who's who's being friendly, who's not, who thinks they're hot shit, but they aren't and who thinks they aren't, but they're actually really cool. Yeah. What was the first hello or more so what was the moment where you're like, oh, I could trust her. You're like, okay, we're friends beyond modeling at this point. Hmm. I think it really was like the, it's going to sound weird, but like the love of the gym, because then you wake up and like, we would just like always meet at 6 a.m. fully, like no hair, makeup, you're just sweating together. And we had very similar ways of like wanting to like 
do that and just had the same like drive for what we wanted to do with our careers. And really was so amazing meeting someone you could totally lean on. It's such an interesting industry in the sense of it's hard to explain unless you're in it. And having someone who was going through the exact same things and like really understood was just so magical. And Yeah. I also think there's a lot of girls who don't want to share all of the positive things that they're doing in their career. For example, like if I get a job, I'm always, I always tell Josephine like, oh, you should try to get this too so we can do it together. And I think that we just were both like that with each other. Whereas other girls were a little bit more secretive, like, oh, I'm not saying what job I'm doing. Like it's it's all about them, whereas we're more of giving. Yeah, there was like no gatekeeping whatsoever. Yeah. Also, like, what are you getting that right for this? Yeah, yeah, same. Okay, fair enough. They're not trying to cheat me. Like, <laughs> right. very open about because, talking about yeah. rates and payment is huge. Yeah, especially because that was like an absolute no go in our industry. Like, you always got told instantly from your agents, like, don't do that. And we were just like, don't see the point if this can benefit both of us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, it's so important because I think women, especially, are really trained that there's only one seat for us. So why let someone else? Because then they might get it when it comes to, I mean, you mentioned Victoria's Secret. That at the time was the Mecca, the most competitive, the most coveted thing. How did each of you land your angel status at Victoria's Secret? Oh, it definitely took some time. I tried out for the fashion show twice before I ended up getting it my third time. And it wasn't until then that I actually started shooting for the brand. And it maybe took me three years of shooting with them to actually get offered to have a contract. So a lot of patience. (laughs) And there was definitely a lot of competition. But yeah, I just worked hard. And I always go into work as if it's my first day. So I always keep a really positive attitude. And just like, I'm always so grateful and happy to be wherever I am. I think it was very similar to me. Like, I actually started following me around 17. You can go in for like this yearly, like there's casting for the show. You have to be 18, but they can kind of like follow you throughout the year. And my third casting, I finally booked a show. And then that means three years. Like that's three years of seeing them on and off and then starting to shoot. And I mean, my first shoot, I don't even think they showed my face. I think I was just like a body. <laughs> and then I graduated to show my face and then graduated from clothes when they were still getting clothes to underwear. And it really was like a process of like, because they don't just sign you. It's very much testing you out. Mm-hmm. Do you fit the brand? Can you handle all the press, the media that comes along with it? And I'm actually super grateful it took a few years because I think if they had signed me at 18, I would have been way too green. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was almost, I was like 23 before I became an angel, which I was way more mature and ready for it by then. I just vividly remember the impact of like Victoria's Secret growing up. And I really think, so I'm 26. So I think- When I was like 15, 16, 17, I remember even in college, that was, I think, the peak of yes. And not to like weird you guys out, but I think I speak for a chunk of people who were like obsessed, who were like, what are they eating? What is the waist measurement? Here's an inspiration picture for the diet that I go on. Watching the fashion show and just think if I could look this way, I mean, I would be set for life. At the time, did you guys even process or comprehend the impact on the people watching? And like, what does it even make you feel now? It was a weird time because you realized you were getting put on like a massive amount of eyes looking. You understood that with BS, but it was, we got signed like right when social media exploded too. So it was right this like culmination of, oh, everybody's going to know you for this glamorous side, like takes two and a half hours in hair and makeup, personal trainers, this whole situation. Yet you now have the ability of taking them behind the scene and showing like the more real you. So there's this weird mix. I felt like it was overnight. You just let people in. And I don't think I understood, especially not in the beginning, how obsessed people could be by little details. Like they would like to know what kind of toothpaste I used. <laughs> and I was like, really? That just seems boring. I don't understand the detail, but I think we both, that's actually where Jojo also started a little bit, saw the responsibility pretty quick and really understood, oh, We have to show them how much we actually put into the gym that we actually this is not like some start model thing. And also just be very honest, like genetically in lottery, we have both been like lucky to fit what was the beauty standard of that time. So there was so many things that had to go right and so much hard work behind it. And that's where Jojo got started at first, because we really wanted to show that on our social media. And we could outside of where VS was like, oh, now there's like 14 
layers of extensions and <laughs> makeup and this whole thing and like glitter and like the transformation was so fun. But that's not what we looked like at home in our sweats. Yeah. I mean, I even appreciate you so much just talking about like genetics and the things that you were doing behind the scenes, because I think at the time, at least even celebrities, it was the thing to just be like, woke up like this. I think that's where the joke of I woke up like this comes from is mm -hmm. people literally trying to play it off. That was just them. It's an effortless thing. Whereas now I think we have so much transparency mm -hmm. around what goes on behind the scenes. Definitely. I mean, I see comments every day on my Instagram or TikTok. Oh, you're always so put together. You're always so perfect. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Not even the slightest bit. If you saw me waking up in the morning in my house, middle of the day, like walking around with spit up all over me from the baby, like no makeup on, like that's my real life. Obviously, social media is fake, people say, but like you definitely put out a different image on social than but you do I, in your real life. I always want to question like the the fakeness of it, because for me, it is a version of who we are. It is a version of who we are at work. That is the girl that shows up to castings, to events, to it's part of my work uniform. As some people are told they have to wear suits to an office. It's just part of our image is such a huge part of our, the brand we are. Yeah. So it, and it is fun to be able to be both. But like nobody wants to be in their work suit 24 seven. Mm -hmm. Like none of us want to be glammed up 24 seven. But it's fun to be able to put that. <laughs> yeah. facade on it and it is I also think it's helpful to have a distinction of your work persona and your private persona especially in such a public job mm -hmm. that it is there's like a certain protectiveness of your own private self when each of you were would you use the word rejected like first of all I think I have friends in the modeling industry who are like I got rejected here I got turned down from this the years you didn't make it did you go back home and think oh, well, like what's wrong with me? Like, do I need to change this? Do I need to do this? I had Emily DiDonato on the podcast. I love talking with her and she was super candid about a struggle she had with body image and food and trying to kind of fit this mold. And I'm curious if you relate. I think for me personally, this is where the family support came in. Having my mom, it is weird at like 16, 17 to be told no because of how you look. And in the beginning, I was like, oh, that's, is that personal? Like, do they not like me? And just having someone like my mom just be like, no, 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 you just have to accept that you are your own product. So that, yes, it's technically, but it's not you that criticizes. It's just like, you don't fit what they're looking for. So I quickly like had this mentality that it's like, there's going to be right clients there for you. I think you're going to lose the game if you try and change your image and your person and physical appearance to fit into clients. Rather, take two steps back. Okay. What do I look like? What are other models who are super successful that fits my vibe? What clients do they work with? Let's go for that career goals instead of like unrealistically trying to fit into like we did high fashion, but none of us was going to be overly massive in high fashion because we're both too like classic girly looking. Like we have a way more like commercial look like they call it where it's like it is middle America. It is the Via's Angel. It is that was the mold we really fit into. So finding that client and then when you started 16, 17, we were both like you couldn't gain weight. We were both just genetically so tiny. And I, I did, was discovered like I eight and I'm 5'11 now. So like I also just kept stretching out. <laughs> and then I around 20, I hit like my height. And then that's all of a sudden boobs and butt comes in. And I start working out differently. And then fashion like, what are those? I'm a break. Like big <laughs> boobs is not a high fashion look, right? Not no. At all. And like when I talk big boobs, we're talking like a C cup. Like that's <laughs> hey, me still, too, girly. <laughs> that's still like not like what I consider big boob. But in the industry, once you're past eight, they're like, <gasps> they're like, oh no, this is tape them down. <laughs> that's funny. Jasmine, what does this make you feel? Yeah, I mean, I agree with Josephine that my mom was definitely a huge support system during that time of my first and second show not getting accepted. I had a lot of friends that would go home and like start crying and be so depressed and start working out like crazy or not eating. And I'm like, whoa, 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 like this is insane. And I luckily didn't have those feelings because of my mom. And also I am very relaxed and a very chilled person. I've been like my not whole natural, how life. Not I don't stress. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's just the way I am. And I would always tell myself it's just it wasn't meant to be or you know, maybe it'll happen later and whatever's meant to be will be is what I always told myself. So I never, ever let it get down on me. I would just be like, OK, you know, like that sucks. But whoever got it in place of me, like that's great for them. I think we both share this one thing like we love what we do, but it's not who we are. I think there's a, I think once, especially I'm sure certain influences modeling 
and entertainment industry can relate. But if you make your whole career, your job, all that is part of your worth, mm -hmm. it's a tough journey. So from an outsider perspective, I've never been in the industry. I would guess you guys are in an outlier group, right? Of people who have this supportive family who's involved in your life. You have this great friendship. You're self-aware. You got a good head on your shoulders and you're approaching it in a super sound way. How did you navigate an environment where the majority was like, let's all go on this diet. Let's take this pill. Let's meet with the special person who blah, blah, blah. You know, all those things that we hear in the media. How do you stay the course? I think that's probably why we gravitated so much towards each other because we found that like non- crazy person <laughs> because it is an industry and it's also a super competitive industry. I couldn't say I had a ton of friends prior to BS. Like, because you were just like constantly traveling. You maybe saw girls like once in a while, but like it was, you were always on a plane and then some, all of a sudden be thrown into a group of 10 girls that I mean, we would work 80, 90 days a year together. So like majority of the year I was spent with this team and that was the first time in my whole career I started having a support system. And even in that, she just stood out to me completely because she is so calm and chill. And I was like, okay, I want to like more of that. I think for me, I still have like my closest friends are from Orange County where I grew up. So being able to come home to them or have them come visit me in New York just again reminded me that not all this crazy fashion stuff matters. If one of my friends is freaking out over a job and she's so stressed and going on this crazy diet. I personally just like to remove myself from that and any negativity that's going on and just go back to like my home friends or Josephine, for example, and just reground myself and just be like, okay, this is, this is something crazy that's happening over here, but we're going to focus on what's important. And that's just like being happy and not letting it really get to my head. It's just amazing to me to think of the environments that you were in and being able to stay the course despite maybe what was going on. Obviously, Victoria's Secret has made a lot of internal changes. They rebranded. What do you think of everything? Knowing that sometimes when people reference this era of VS, it involves the era you were a part of. It's funny to me because while we were in that area, to me, they were the most inclusive, like from a personal perspective, because they were the first one to give me changing room. I was getting a little bit bigger that I wasn't 22 inch waist, but now I was at 24, 25. They were the first people to always like, please do not lose weight. So okay. for us, that was extremely inclusive from the inside perspective when I worked with high fashion, who was the opposite. But obviously in this very small box that was the industry at the time that was now looking back, not at all inclusive. So it's been super interesting to see the outside perspective and I don't I don't think it could continue. And I'm glad that the world woke everybody up. I'm glad that there's like, oh, no, no there is room for more. And I think because they kind of had been the first one to take a step, they might have gotten too comfortable when everybody else was like woke up. I think they took a little too long to like, but we've been this way. I'm like, yeah, but like on such a small scale that it, now everybody's like past you guys. So now you guys have to keep up with everybody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's good that they started to see everything. I think it definitely took them longer than it should have. Mm -hmm. I mean, even for me with Victoria's Secret, it was me and Laiz who were considered like the black girls. Laiz is Brazilian. And that was all there was for years and years. And how did that make you feel? To be honest, I didn't really notice like that much at the time. But now looking back, I'm like, OK, that's a little odd that they only wanted me basically as their own black, only black girl. Yeah. I don't know. It, it didn't affect me then, but I think now looking back, I'm just like, that well, sucks. <laughs> and I, but I also think, again, it's hard to just fully blame BS to yeah. me because it was such an industry issue. Yeah. It was just like there for fashion shows. I mean, you would walk in and like if Joan Smalls at the time, another black girl had booked the show, she was not going to get it. it yeah. There was just, very much like there was three of you guys. Yeah, I think for like six years of my life, it was either me or another black model that would be on the runway for Prada or Louis Vuitton. Only one. It was crazy. And I think it's 
understandable how you're saying, Jasmine, looking at back at the time, you weren't having these thoughts because the world wasn't having these thoughts and yeah. even allowing the possibility that there would be more black women or the, there'd be more representation. So you just came up in a world where like there was always one or two of you. And like, mm -hmm. I think it's as much as it is special when there are people in this world who question the norm and make a difference, the majority of people, it's a tribe mentality goes back to like our ancestors, what yeah. you're doing, what the people around you are doing, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something else I wanted to ask about Jasmine is this photo that VS had posted where you had stretch marks mm -hmm. on your side. And mm -hmm. at the time, I don't even remember this. So this was me researching for this episode. Oh, I remember. <laughs> okay. So I, remember, dude. <laughs> I want to know because that was so revolutionary at the time. Yeah. Was it intentional? Were you aware they were going to do it? Was it an editing mistake? Because they had never shown even an ounce of a dimple, a stretch mark prior to that photo. No, it was not intentional at all. I was actually shooting for my fantasy bra and somehow photos unretouched got released. And I didn't really mind. Like I was like, whatever, it's part of my body. But usually when we were on set vic with Victoria's Secret, we would do body makeup and things like that. And they would do all the retouching. So this was just a very rare occurrence that this photo got out. I don't know if it like got leaked because someone was trying to find photos of the fantasy bra or if they just forgot to edit. I really have no so idea, but it went everywhere. So it was a sanctioned photo. It was like someone screenshotted this video or something like that. I have no idea. Don't even I know, remember. No, but yeah. it kind of, it ended up just almost being the official photo because it was out then. But I, it was, I have they, no they idea. They had some issues from. with like people like, again, obsession of a VS. Yeah. No, they had obsession. Feel, people I'm even dying it down so you don't get up and leave. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much like if things were just getting leaked all of a sudden left and right. And That's true. Things would get leaked all the time, like from our photo shoots. I don't know if it's from the editing room, if someone would, you know, send it out or what would happen. But yeah, that photo went everywhere and it became this whole huge thing that like, for me personally, I thought nothing of it before. Like if I go on set and I have stretch marks on my butt, like I was like, okay, whatever. Like, I have them right there all, too. We girl. all kind of do. Yeah. Like, and it was like, just yeah. like a growth spurt. Like I worked out a lot and my butt got bigger. <laughs> yeah. Like, great. But no, when it blew up and was all over the internet, I'm like, holy shit, what just happened? I, I didn't know that it could cause that much stir over just a model having stretch marks. The other thing, I think it also, I remember we had these talks like, oh, this actually has an impact. Like, I don't, I think you're so in this whole, like, I know the word fantasy became a bad thing, but like the fantasy world of like, you're creating all these illusions. You assume people are in on that. No one looks like this. Yeah. This is all fake. Like, interesting. Like I was 100% sure that there's no way they think looking like this is real. Interesting. Because like it's, yeah. but maybe because we were so in it. So well, because you are you and you see yourself yeah. when you go home and you take the makeup off and you're there behind the scenes as they're putting on body makeup. It's so, like a full costume. Right. Mm -hmm. So, but you're correct. I think for us, it was given as this like effortless thing. And then I put on my bathing suit to go to the pool with my friends. And I expect, I'm like, the standard is to look the way the magazine photo looks, you know, but at that mm -hmm. time, we weren't as aware of Photoshop or retouching or things like that. I mean, now there's so many campaigns and brands who are avidly against the retouching, whereas at that time it was so normal. I mean, everyone mm -hmm. did it, but because there were no apps, we didn't, the public didn't know, mm -hmm. you know, that's such an interesting point, Joe, I think. Which no, is I so crazy because to me, it's so obvious. <laughs> <laughs> when you look back at our old VS campaigns, it's like Before smoothing. Before social media, like I would stand next to the big window billboards on the street and I could stand there for like, 30 minutes and not a single person could put the two people together. <laughs> no, I'm done. And I'm like, I don't even like, I don't even look like my pictures. Like sometimes my mom would be like, is that you? She's like, I didn't even know you could look like this. So it, it was, even though you were shooting underwear constantly, I never really felt naked because we had like two layers of body makeup and sparkle and glitter and oil. And you just knew you're always going to look good because you yeah. have the extra help. <laughs> but it was also like, it was a three hour setup in the morning and like, yeah. We all show up in like sweats, not no makeup and everybody like this. And then two hours later, it's like this like whole like crawling down the catwalk. Yeah. I'm also intrigued with how you both said you had a really great experience and you were never encouraged to change your appearance. So then when you hear of other people saying they had different experiences in the same environment, 
are you just like shocked that that happened and you didn't know? Which I can understand is a very true scenario because I've had incidences in the industry, whether you're working with a brand or a group of people and being like, oh, I had a completely different experience than someone else. For me, Victoria's Secret is always like a little tricky. Every single model in New York City or all over the world wanted that status, wanted the angel card, wanted the contract. There were only very few girls that ever got that. Mm -hmm. So the girls that really, really die hard, mega fan of Victoria's Secret that wanted that stamp of approval, I think some of them have a sour taste in their mouth with the brand. So I think a lot of them find ways to nitpick at things of like, oh, they told me to do this when maybe they really didn't or, oh, they told me to do this. They did, but that was a industry standard. Like you would always get some lame excuse why you didn't get a job. It was never just like she didn't work out for us. It was always like, oh, maybe if she was more blonde or maybe if she was this, like, oh, she looked tired that day on set. Or no, I feel like she looks bloated and I've just come off a 14 hour flight. I'm like, no wonder. Yeah. So I, we, I would get, I've gotten the same criticism that they talk about online from every client. And then there's just the clients that you worked out for, whatever it was like, because especially for VS, it was not just your looks. It was like, could you handle a conversation? Could you handle the media press? Could you be a role model and like talk about, there was so much more. That's why I also it took both of us five years to be vetted yeah. by them. And similar to what you're describing now, we're in a time where even if there are brands who are being more inclusive and being more diverse and representation is important to them, people are not getting the job because they're not large enough. They're not short enough. They're not, you know, so similar to what you said before in the very beginning, Joe, about this being your job and that being a costume, like it, you're entering a career where it's, it is what you look like for the job. And I think entering that world is going to always come with some people who are like, the look isn't what we want for the thing. Totally. So I have to imagine yeah. that. I think that's there's tough. been like even a stage of time, maybe over the last two years or so, where no brands would want to take like blonde white girls. And that used to be like the number one thing that Victoria's Secret wanted, that all the other brands wanted. And now it's all about the girls who are diverse and mixed race. And I think, <laughs> I mean, you're a white model. She would be like, oh, crap, like now it's just not my time. You either have to like have a little bit more weight on your body and be mixed or I'm not going to work. <laughs> so fast. Oh, there's been times like the last few years where, well, not now because I'm pregnant, but like they would literally soften opposite retouching. Yeah. They would soften our abs out. Like they would, being fit was not in. So like all of a sudden I'm like, what happened to my stomach here? And it would be like a, almost like opposite retouch. Yeah. Which is Interesting. equally confusing. Yeah. So like I think, again, as inclusive as this industry is, everything is selling. Everything is an illusion. Yeah. Whatever it's a bigger illusion, whatever it's a softer illusion. Like there is just, it's never not. Or it's like, oh, we're doing anti-retouching, which means let's make the light worse. Let's make, like, I remember when I had on set where they like, they ask you to like, oh, can you relax your stomach and blow it out? Like, and you're like, can you sit more slouchy? And you're like, mm -hmm. I'm doing everything. I'm like, <laughs> so now we're just trying to take worse photos to see more relatable. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing is polarizing, especially because at the root of it, it's just like accommodating what sells. Yeah, it's all for selling. That's why, like, this industry, to a certain extent, is is fake no matter what. Yeah, I mean, they. <laughs> I feel like the industry went like super extreme, trying to make everyone happy, and now they're like, maybe that doesn't sell the product the way we want to. So now they're slowly pulling back. Yeah, but it's very interesting. The last thing I want to touch on here is when Jasmine, you were talking about this validation, this card, because. I literally mean it when I say that when I was growing up, I thought if you were a Victoria's Secret angel, it was like the 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 wand of God. Like you are 10 out of 10, the most perfect, beautiful person ever. And at the time growing up, I truly thought that that sort of beauty as a woman meant my life would be perfect and happy. I just remember thinking, I just wish I could snap my fingers and have this body or be this thin or have a 24 inch waist, whatever it is. So as two women who got this stamp at that time, like, is your life perfect? Are you happy? Are you all the things that a girl like me thought you would be if you had that validation? It's always interesting <laughs> to me to be told that because I think culturally I didn't grow up with the VS show. Like I knew what it was, but like growing up in Europe, I didn't realize that level. Of, but I mean, we're 30 now and 
Me too. <laughs> and like, I'm in a really good spot. Like, I will say, like, I have been super fortunate with my career. Has it been a lot of work and has it been days? Yes. But have we also just been, both of us, kind of like slow and steady, been timing was lucky. Our attitude had to work was great. Timing with social media. We're both married. Soon we're both moms. Like, But you, of course, have in your own insecurities and your own mental health struggles, right? Like, you're human is my point. Like, No, I for think, sure. I think- I'm, I'm, but I just don't want to downplay that we've had a lucky career. We've had a really successful career. But yeah, no. Has it mentally, like, when I say, like, oh, it's been great to have my mom's support system, that's just been my mom still, like, picking me off from the floor. There's been someone to pick me off when I, I've had meltdowns or when I'm like, this makes no sense or I'm ready to quit all this. This is dumb. Like, what is this industry like? But yeah, I would say like an overall. It's been pretty good. But yeah, yeah we are I think really it's been really good. I think even without the Victoria's Secret stamp of approval, I would be just as happy as I am today. Yeah. But it did take us a lot of work. Like a lot of people think when you think of Victoria's Secret, you think, OK, they did a casting. Boom. Now they're these mega like supermodel stars. That's not how it happened. Like we did fashion shows for 10 years. Like. I don't know, Josephine walked even more shows than I did, but like walking, I don't know, 80 shows in a season. This was when there was no social media, no ways, no like Google Maps, no none of that. So you had to go around Paris running I around to book. I didn't even have a exactly. blue dot on my like <laughs> phone to walk around. running around to a million castings a day. It's like the models today have no idea what it was like to be models when we started. And I feel like we owe it to ourselves to be so proud of ourselves of what yeah. we've done and even, yeah, getting that VS stamp of approval is like the cherry on top. But I think without it, I would have, I would be just as happy. Totally. And to clarify, yeah, my, my point wasn't that someone picked you from the street and gave you this stamp. You guys worked your asses off to be there. It's that even though you walked this fashion show, you're still human and that you have your own struggles. You've cried. You've had a day where you don't feel good in what you're wearing and you yeah. don't like a picture of yourself. Because I think that's the thing people assume you never experience. Oh my gosh, I don't oh. like pictures of myself <laughs> all the time. <laughs> I mean, again, that's why the the character, the costume comes in. Because some days you got dressed up as a VA's angel and you played that role. The next day you are, you know, selling to a, a brand you don't necessarily would see yourself in. But like, I would say like 90% of the time, I wouldn't dress like a certain way in front of the camera or pick the hair and makeup. You had to learn to see it as like, a costume or a work outfit because like, I don't know if I could have done it if it was like me in front of the camera every day. No. And then I'll be like, no, sorry, can we not do this with my hair? Can we not? And I, then I would start having attitude and then yeah. it would have never worked. Oh, yeah. When they do my hair and make a bad on set, I get a full blown like attitude inside. I never let it show on outside because <laughs> I don't want to be mean, but I just shut down. <laughs> do either of you go to therapy or have a counselor, or life coach or Talk to your mom. I was in therapy this week. So just wondering what keeps you sane throughout everything. I've done a little bit of therapy throughout the years when certain things have been like extra hard. I'm like, okay, I need a few hours to just talk. But again, really grateful for have a good friend group from growing up, have great parents and family I can talk to and a super supportive husband. And you? I don't have a therapist. I take it back to, I don't know what happened with me in my past life. We need to do another just, episode and I'm dive into your childhood. I feel like we need to meet someone who can like talk to past life situations and see like, I you probably never had like a traumatic death somewhere. Exactly. I'm like, what was I in my past life? I must have been like, like a know, Buddhist monk in. someone. Have you ever yeah. done something really bad? Like the principal at school called you in. That never gets your heart rate going. Oh my gosh. No, I don't think so. <laughs> what if you're like late for something super important? If I do no, that, like, I it'll, sweat it'll and like fine. anxiety. Oh my it, gosh, like, that's hilarious. No, my Even husband when I is hit... complete opposite. He's like, Jasmine, we have to do this. We have like, you can't be late. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, it's okay. You also have an insane skill to just speak everything into the universe. Yeah. That Love I that. do. That I do. Well, I was talking to my therapist about this idea of like manifesting and speaking into the universe. Because sometimes I get like intrusive thoughts and I'm like, oh my God, what if this thought happens? And she's like, well, your thoughts don't, your thoughts aren't magical. And I'm like, but what about manifesting? And she said, well, you can manifest, but usually when you do, you subconsciously like work towards it. And if you say, I'm going to walk this fashion show, like you're going to hustle your ass off that year and you're going to be where you need to be and talk to you, you know, but yeah, manifesting is major. Because you can become your own little life coach. Yeah. And like you, you write it down. Like I take notes from her, like. I would walk into castings after learning and like 
put them in the back pocket. Like I would help me to physically write down a list and have that. Or if I ever got, I got this tip from a model years ago, like when you start being nitpicked by the industry about your body, just stand in front of the mirror naked. Just stand there and watch and just like look at yourself and like just be comfortable. It's really uncomfortable in the beginning. Like it's a really uncomfortable exercise. But after a while, I was just like, oh, this is me because you have this like weird morphed idea of what your body looks like. And that has really honestly helped me through pregnancy because it's the first time my body's really changing. It's always been kind of steady. Yeah. I'm trying to self do that, but also self correct because I get really insecure about my boobs not being like as perky or high as like they should be. And every time I look in the mirror, like every day I say something negative to myself about my boobs. No. But I'm trying to be like, but similar to what you said. And I love that, Josephine, you didn't say like, say positive things. You were just like, just accept what is. And I think I've been trying to be like, this is what like boobs look like. This is what boobs look like. And like this but, high perky round nipples on the freaking top. Like that is fantasy world, right? Yeah. I also think like the way I always look at situations, if say I was you, for example, and you're like, oh, I don't like my boobs are this way. It's like, I'm lucky to even have boobs. Some women don't have boobs. You yeah. know, some women go through breast cancer and have all of these different complications. So like, just be happy with what you have. And I always try to take every say negative thought if it comes to mind for a second and I just twist it to gratitude really quickly. Yeah. And there's also like there's two steps. There's acceptance of the things you can't change and learn to like, I mean, I'm not saying you can learn to love them tomorrow, but it's on the way to journey. And if there is something I'm I'm unhappy with the, the pounds are like you can do something about that. It's not easy. It's hard. But like I also think accepting to just not give up and let your misery win and your self pity is also like super important for me. Speaking of Joja, I feel like it's inspirational and also unique that the two of you have what I would call an edge of I'm going to build a business off of the notoriety, the attention, the eyeballs that I have. And not everyone does that. I was having this conversation at lunch the other day just as a creator. Like there's people who are like, oh, I'll make my TikTok and my Instagram videos and like do my brand deals. And they're not thinking, what's a product I can create? What's people I can hire? How can I build this out and last for the next 20, 30 years? So with the company that you guys founded, you're doing that. Have you always been business minded? Did one of you come to the other? Because not everyone has an edge to expand and develop a business. Yeah. I think growing up, I've always been extremely business minded. I knew I always wanted to start something. I just didn't know what it was. And I also knew that I didn't want to just slap my name on a random product. Like someone comes to me and is like, hey, Jasmine, we should make shoes. I'd be like, that makes absolutely no sense because people don't know me for shoes. And so Joe and I decided to start a workout community where we would just post our workouts and show all of the work that we actually did do in the gym. Like we were some of the only girls that would actually lift weights and squat heavy pounds every day. Especially the time where like you said the word weights, like, oh my God, you're going to get so big. And like, yeah. for us, that was definitely not the case. Yeah. So when we started Joja, we were not even thinking, let's make it an act a clothing brand. Like that was far, far out from what we were ever dreaming of. And slowly, as we started posting on Instagram, girls would ask, what are you wearing? Like, what are those workout pants? And we were like, hmm, we should be able to say our own thing. I know. What really you guys cool. are wearing is so cute today. I love Thanks. how. But you know what? This is why y'all are stylish and I'm not, because I would never think to throw these leather blazers over and the boots. I mean, that's it's next level. But it's great that they're versatile pieces. Exactly. But it's also it's interesting because without really we've also been the face for like I mean, via sport, but also like different sports brands for so long. And without mainly just to like help VS out, we were like, we would save pants we loved. We would save pants where we specifically didn't like something about them. And we would constantly like, oh, if you guys just like change the line here, this would benefit the look of my butt that I worked 14 hours a week in the gym <laughs> for. This would highlight this. This was like, oh, I'm missing support here. Or we know like 90% of our girlfriends complain about this specific thing. So we would kind of market research almost for the benefit of VS because we're like, can we change this? Again, not even really thinking that we were giving ourselves this whole setup for a company. And it was kind of like things to like demand that we were like, oh, we have something here. And then in that sense, COVID was a blessing for us because there was a first time in 10 years that anything slowed down for us enough to have the conversation more than just be like, 
this seems like a fun idea. Let's just have fun with it. We were like, I don't know. Let's see if we can turn this into something. But that took like not working. Wow. So it's literally so special. I think your your relationship and what you've built and both of you, your mindsets and like what you've gotten through. And I love what you said about your moms. I'm also so close with my mom. She would have oh. been the same way. And I think that's- Shout out to moms. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to moms. <laughs> They're the best. And also- the chosen moms. I mean, those women in your life are just so important, but I think it's just awesome. And it's special, you know, to have someone come into your life that you're super aligned with and can get close with and can build I mean, something with. We didn't even coordinate outfits today. And this is embarrassing. <laughs> you're telling me you didn't coordinate. I literally can't believe it. I mean, I was like, no, I, it is no. too. This yeah, bodysuit also comes in different colors. So the fact that we wore the, we both <laughs> picked the tan. Uh, I actually uh, just picked it because the two other ones I've used all week. So I'm like, they were dirty. And I was like, oh, Tan it is today. Oh my gosh. I love it. And you have a new collection that is dropping soon, right? Yeah. Yeah. May 11th. Yeah. It's tomorrow. Start. Oh, that's tomorrow. Wow. My brain is, is my pregnancy brain is not happening. Oh my gosh. Well, when this comes out tomorrow, they'll be out. So woo, woo, woo. Yeah. But thank you, Josephine. Thank you, Jasmine. It was so great to chat with you and kind of peel back the curtain and some layers on something I've thought about and watched from afar for so long. And I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Real Pod. If this hit home or helped you in some way, send it to a friend, a teammate, roomie, share the love, share the realness. New episodes of Real Pod come out every single Wednesday. So make sure you are subscribed to this podcast so you never miss an episode.